I would like you to meet a genius. This man is one of Jamaica's foremost record producer. He has produced such artists as Juno Marvin, The Meditation, The Upsetters, to name a few. He's not only a record producer, he's a songwriter, a poet, a musician, a video expert, and overall a Rasta man. The man I'm talking about is none other than Lee Scratch Perry, better known in Jamaica as the upsetter, Kusha. Positive vibration, miracle Jesus. Magic Emperor Rastafari, His Imperial Majesty Emperor Alice Selassie the First, the Lords of Lords, the Kings of Kings, the Conqueror of Lambs, the Tribe of Elects of God, Light of the World, who tried to rule. Man of 144,000 hands. Man of 144,000 plans. Do re mi fa so la ti do. Music Papa. Where is Mama? You should see one of them. I'm a jaddle out of most of you. You should see one of them. Run us with all that open book. Genesis is a revelation. Open jolly of the land of Judah. Hey, yo! Master of Ceremony. Hi, good evening. Well, you two have two names. The one Christian name is Renford U. Perry. And the other name was Lee Byrne Perry. Lee Byrne. Because that's the way my mother knew about it from Africa. You have, you have, that, you have two identification. And my identification is Lee Byrne Perry and then the change from burn to scratch. Maybe I'm coming from somewhere in West Africa originally, but it doesn't matter. I was born in Kendall, and I was born in Hanover. I mean, to say I was born and assigned the rule to take over and hand it over to me. I don't have to take over by force, I just go by the spirit, command of the spirit. Whenever I have a job or something like that, and Maybe to earn some extra money sometime, you go out there and I was living on a farm where cane, they plant cane on the farm. And my mother sometimes, she used to cut some cane to make some money. Sometimes when I want extra money, I go there and I help her cut some cane and earn some extra money. The house that we were sharing wasn't, I don't think much more bigger than this zoo. This zoo. <laughs> Well, growing up <clears throat> in Kendall was really a rough life. A mother of four of us, 
and I, um, I was the third one. And when she and my father part, she take um, three and leave me alone. If my father, because the father liked me most and um, I wanted to keep me. It's not much the father could do for me because I don't think Kim didn't know anything about how to have feelings for somebody. And just maybe he liked me and he think he wanted me to be his slave or something like that. Because then he married another woman and I have to um, just moving around like um, a handyman and something like that. I didn't like the idea, so I decided to run away to, to my mother's. fifties, the undeveloped western part of Jamaica was becoming a popular destination for tourists. Twenty-year-old Lee Perry got a job driving a tractor, helping to build the very first road to Negril. And then I heard that there was construction in Negril. I was looking for a tractor driver. If I was not in Negril, I wouldn't be a, a, a top producer. Because it's when I was working with the rock, I pick up those um, sonic vibration, and I hear the rock. When you throw the rock, it sounds just like you hear the thunder roll and that thing. I, I'm sure that's where everything coming from. So I hear in those sound and the clash, and like the drum, and then the rain. I hear when the cymbal hit, and I hear the rain. And I hear when the, the stone clash. And I hear the thunder roll and I hear the lightning flash. That's why I come to get involved in the music business. I learn everything from Stone. of stones and boulders. Like many youth before him, Lee left the country for the big city with dreams of making it in the music industry. Join hands to hands, children started to dance. We're independent. Don't be sad and blue. The Lord is still with you. Because the time has come when you The music industry was booming to the sound of ska, a Jamaican genre combining elements of calypso with American jazz and rhythm and blues. To meet the worldwide demand for the bold new sound, producers like Prince Buster, Duke Reed, and Cox and Dud opened up their own studios and began recording ska bands by the hundreds. Lee worked at all three studios, starting out as a handyman and a janitor, quickly working his way up the ladder, scouting talent, arranging tracks, and finally recording, producing, and ghostwriting songs. I have a lot of songs that they take from me. They don't take them so. And not even my name was written as a writer. They don't take them because he's a country boy and he can't say anything otherwise, he'll be your person. <laughs> They respect the words, I respect the songs, and think they are good songs, but not me, they don't want me to sing them. For me to survive, I have to find something for myself. So we go back to the church in which we baptize and listen to the energy, and it was like a spiritual vibration, so I said, we're going to make spiritual music and leave them to the rock steady on the sky. 
So this is how this, this spiritual music comes in the, the car reggae. People Funny Boy was an insult directed at his old boss, Joe Gibbs, recorded in Gibbs' own studio behind his back. It was one of the first songs in history to employ the use of a sample, a baby cry. And it established Lee Scratch Perry as a force to be reckoned with. People Phony Boy sold 60,000 copies upon release, allowing him to buy his first car, a Model S Jaguar, imported from England. Most importantly, the song established an entirely new genre of music that would come to be called reggae. To me, what reggae means, it interprets a dog, have a piece of cloth, tearing up together. <laughs> Arr, you ever see the dog do that? That's the, that's the reggae. I'm not going to stop telling you up the dog, tear up the pierce service. So it's revolution. It's war. Scratch was cultivating his own unique identity and brand. Setting himself apart from his peers, he had become the upsetter. There are two, two parts to a story. The upset mean also to upset people, bring them up. And another part of it is means to destroy them. You understand it? So the word can do anything. It's a two-edged sword. That means to say, I am the upset, I know to upset the people who is fighting against me. And also mean to uplift the people and lift up the people and set them up who are with me. The world is visible and the world is invisible. international success fueled Scratch's own label, record shop, and an instrumental band, The Upsetters. Based on the success of his hits, artists all over Jamaica began searching him out. One such artist was young Bob Marley, who had achieved some minor success with his band, The Wailers, but was in desperate need of a new sound. Well, he didn't have anything spiritual going on. He was giving up. And the first song he come to him said, his cup is overflowed, I don't know what to do. He was singing a James Brown song. Still recorded. And there was set a song that he would have recorded them series. But they would still dry, they didn't have no spirit into it. So we know how business going in Jamaica when an artist is struggling. If it's not a problem or stress, is it will be a hard doppy. So then now I get the message. So um, let's conquer his doppy and uh, write the doppy conquer him for him. Yes, my friend. We're in the streets again. So I 
after we do the doppel tanker and, and the soul rebel and those things, that's where he start to go up into, um, maybe into heaven. And everything in the world right. Everything in the world right. as a mentor, Bob Marley moved into Lee's house. Lee would give him tea with milk and honey every morning to change his voice. Well, it was great to have him, Bob Marley, in our house, because there was so much message delivering that I alone could not take all the message. And uh, if he wasn't there, some of the message that the people here you know, they would not hear it. So I think of him like my brother. And I did not put him in my back room. I live in the back room and put him in the front room. So he was hearing what I couldn't hear at the moment. <laughs> so he hear there is a natural mystic blowing in the air, and things are not like it used to be. Things are gonna change, and he don't know the answer. So that's how we decide to take over everything. As Marcus Garvey and embrace us. You couldn't imagine what that means. If you listen carefully, now you will hear It could be the first trumpet Might as well be the last Many more will have to die Many more will have to cry Don't ask me why By the beginning of the 1970s, Perry's fruitful working relationship with Marley and the Whalers was at its height. The songs and albums they recorded together are considered by many to be Marley's finest work. And it could be said that with Lee Perry's guidance, Bob became the international phenomenon he is today. Bob did want to play his guitar. That was his hope to play his guitar on stage and things like that. And. Um, the other people that they work with didn't want to give him that chance to do that. I'm telling them that it's okay. It's okay with me, no problem. Give him that confidence that it can work. Peter also did want to make you be himself a star by himself. I don't want to be like singing harmony all the time. We make some tracks with him and arrange with Joe Gibbs to do um solo album with him and thing like that, encourage him. I was playing the part of the prophet and by playing the other part of the king, to establish the music. To bring the music from, from the ghetto to a higher standard of king and prophet, like king and prophet. A king star, or the king is a star, and the, the promoter and the producer is a prophet. So I am playing the part of Marco Garvey, because Marco Garvey was a real prophet, not a, not a false prophet. Because Marco, if it wasn't for Marcus Garvey, you would not have any black star in Jamaica. You come with the idea about seven mile of black star line, you were talking about black stars. So without that line to build up black people, there wouldn't be any black stars in, from Jamaica. And at that time, there wouldn't be any freedom for black people. They would be still end up as being slaves. Children of Israel, this is a time we must come together. Live in unity. Are we not the sons of slaves? Yes, we are. Thank you. 
got another God who a second God who believe in evil and slavery and using, penalizing. They want all the oil, all the vanity, all the riches and all the wealth, and they need slaves to work in to do those jobs that they cannot do. The Babylonian system. So God takes some of us out of, of Africa and send us to Jamaica. And this is what him take out of Africa and send to Jamaica as superstar. I'm standing on the spot where they used to transform slavery from Africa to sell to Jamaica, where the white plantation is. But it will be no more as lightning live it and turn the ball over it. Time for the black man to take over. Time for the black man to try big car. Time for the big black man to own big ship. Time for the black man to own airplane. Time for the white man to work for the black man. A change in time, says Miracle Jesse. In 1973, Lee's relationship with the whalers came to an abrupt end after Scratch unlawfully sold the rights to their music to a major label in England. The Wailers then released the hit song Trenchtown Rock, an insult aimed at Perry. But the Wailers go behind the back and arrange this song, Trenchtown Rock. Was encouraging Buck to sing against me because if you listen it, it's uh, the big fish has Scratch, and me just is medium attack. So the one who hit me with a trench stone rock, and we have to tell Jaja why. They make the children cry. After he may have tried to establish them in England, you know, he's going to lick me with a rock. I may give the pirate the music them to, exp to expose them. Otherwise, he may give the pirate the music, they wouldn't reach anywhere. Because that's why he wanted to lick me with a trench stone rock. This is trench stone rock. Don't watch that. Trench Down Rock was a huge hit, and even though the Whalers felt wronged by Perry, their music was now in the hands of English fans, making them international stars. I am guilty of giving the Whalers song to Trojan, otherwise they wouldn't reach anywhere. Confession is good for the soul. Perry needed his own recording studio, plus a larger house for his wife and ever-growing family. With money in his pocket, Scratch moved out of the ghetto to Five Cardiff Crescent in the hills above Kingston. And from the ground up, he constructed his own home studio. The Black Ark, AKA the Ark of the Covenant, was born. When I build a studio, like I build myself a church, like a temple, I was him as I built in the temple, we built in the temple of King Solomon. So I did build it to fight against the heads of government and the council of churches, that's what I built it for, not to make myself a millionaire, because I know the millionaire business is just a joke. I say Babylon fall in the Ark of the Covenant, and when I speak here, whatsoever I said goes, because this is the house of God. Wherever you go with the Ark of the Covenant, you must win all war. This is the only war, Ark of the Covenant. Some are saying ask some, but they ask too much and nobody can tell. The Ark of the Covenant is in Jamaica, sun and land of the sun, where it is the gods of gods. I'm telling you about the power of the black man. Sound, words, and power conquer. All 72 nations must walk to reggae music, rockstar music, ska music, calypso music, merengue music, jazz music. They don't care what the music might be, but music is the only comforter. I'm telling you the truth, man. From my computer room, the room of truth, the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> With the freedom of a home studio, making music became a 24-hour operation. 
Perry produced an amazing amount of work at this time, upwards of 20 songs a week for hundreds of artists for five years straight. On the surface, it seemed that very little sleep, copious amounts of ganja and white Jamaican rum fueled the explosion of the black arc. But in actuality, it was a spiritual and artistic awakening within Scratch that made this moment a turning point. In the early 1970s, Perry helped invent yet another genre, dub, a forebearer of all modern electronic music, drum and bass, house, techno, and hip hop. Lucifer, son of the morning. I'm gonna chase you out of earth. Why do people to listen to difference? Listen to vice, listen to music, and make a choice. It's like uh, it's a market, and uh, the people don't know what to expect, and if you give them two different versions, they will take it. It's like you give them some rice for dinner, you don't give them rice for supper. And chase the devil. Bye. Bye. Instead of eating the same rice all the time, sometimes I eat a little, a little bread. And here's the diet. Here's the side of the music. Disco devil. Look at the disco devil. Dress as a disco rebel. Disco devil. Level the disco devil. Dress as a disco rebel. Disco she bump, she bump, she not the fun sky. She bump, she bump, she not the fun sky. She bump, she bump, she not the fun sky. She bump, she bump, she not the fun sky. So it's, it's all you do it, you mix it, you mix the music. So this side you play rock, guitar, next four bar you play blues, and that's how we get it. And then it's okay, the drum and bass, the foundation, sometimes take out the piano, and then take out the organ, sometimes take out the guitar, and let people listen more to the heartbeat and the brain. like half song tracks. I have a cassette playing the only symbols sometimes. As I only made my own symbol song like that. When I dub the symbol on the cassette myself, I push. And I have that cassette running. On the live session, that's why people want to know how we get so much track and four track. And then we make the cassette live while nobody's not there. And when the session starts, that cassette is playing. So as the musician go on the drum, him here, what he meant, just to play a long jam. So he's copying that. So when he done copy that, me have two copy. The, the original and his copy. So I put them two together and put them try equalizer. Lee's greatest contribution to modern music was utilizing the mixing desk as an instrument. The engineer now became the artist, 
Perry would create instrumental versions of his own songs, manipulating and reshaping the sound by removing the vocals, emphasizing the drum and bass, and adding extensive echo and reverb effects. Lee Perry, along with other Jamaican artists, started rhyming over these instrumental tracks, a technique known as toasting. This Jamaican art form would soon make its way to the South Bronx with Jamaican immigrants, where in the late 1970s, hip-hop was born. Like I said, dub itself is a creation. With the dub, you can use an artist from the street for the dub without no voice. Dub is a thing that you can do anything with, you can play with it. And it sounds so fun that everybody likes it. In his unconventional approach to recording and producing, nothing was off limits to scratch, often employing found sounds, venturing outdoors to conduct his own field recordings or simply holding a mic up to a television. The mid-70s saw Jamaica go through a period of political and social upheaval. Guns flooded the streets as Kingston descended into gang warfare. War, gunshot and fighting and Roadblock and problem everything. You had to get in upside down. Government problem and all that. What kind of war was happening? Just like they even sometimes now I can hear you see something in Kingston and hear that another set of politicians sending gunmen to to do this and to do that and cause a havoc and something like that. A thing like that always in Kingston. Then soldiers come out to um, back up the police to make themselves stronger. Place have to close down and thing like that. Shop up the lock. <laughs> the police in full control, business have to close down and thing like that. It's always in Kingston. famous he got, the more Scratch became a target for beggars and thieves. Both police and local gangsters extorted him from known amounts of money, sometimes at gunpoint. He was forced to hire soldiers to keep the police and thieves off his back. It was out of this reality that an international hit was created. Police and thieves in the street. The police know you have too much money, you know you get illegal and find a way to put a case on you to get some money from you. The case might not go through. Then you might have to sympathize, um, what do you call it? Cool it down and give him money and make him go on. Also, say the thief know you have money, you have to support him or blackmail you or something like that. So that was another thing that was happening in Jamaica. So we build up that about. June and Mervyn come with the idea. Hear me, all the crimes committed day by day. No one tried to stop it in any way. All the peacemakers turn war officers. In 
1976, Perry flew to London to work with The Clash. They had covered his hit song, Police and Thieves, and asked them to produce their next album. Eager to get out of Jamaica, he obliged. Police and thieves in the street. people make the reggae music live. There was the people who believe in the style and something like that. And those people who believe in the style, we call them punk. And you want to know the truth, then I am really a punk. I am a punk. I am not have control, I cannot be controlled. If I want to spit here, I spit here. I want to piss there, I piss there. And if anything I want to do, I do it. Punk is magic. Punk is magic. And there was the magic people who bring the reggae music to the top. So we call it a punk, punky reggae party. On that same trip, Lee Perry and Bob Marley recorded Punky Reggae Party. Bob was in London at the time, living the life of an international superstar. Despite the problems between the Whalers and Scratch in the past, the deep bond between Bob and Lee was too strong to be totally severed simply because of cash. But if his cup was overflow, and you don't know what to do, and he find somebody to show him what to do, why shouldn't he return to that person unless he's stupid? Around the same time, Paul McCartney called Scratch, requesting Perry's signature sound for his wife Linda's debut solo album. Perry and McCartney shared a deep musical connection, so much so that when Paul was arrested in Japan for marijuana possession, Lee wrote a letter to the magistrate of Tokyo demanding Paul's release. Well, um, the standard of Paul, and Paul is um, dealing with righteousness, and the people who are dealing with righteousness, they're supposed to have a certain amount of of ganja because ganja is about part of his spirit that they deal with. And he wasn't selling ganja, he just had that to, to uh, like a spiritual guide or something like that. So he wasn't a seller or a abuser of ganja. Pop artists like Johnny Rotten of the Sex Pistols, Robert Palmer, and Simply Red all made their way to the Black Ark. Perry's status as a producer was reaching its peak In the late 
late 70s, the Black Ark's open door policy created an oasis where anyone could gather, play music, and smoke ganja in peace. Rastas moved onto the property en masse, holding court both day and night. Amid the chaos, Scratch completed perhaps the greatest achievement of his musical career, with three Rastafarians named the Congos. Ironically, this record would spell the downfall of the Black Ark. I didn't have too much dread around me, you know. It was too much. It's like, me not support the dread and support the dread and family. And then me want to make different changes. So me do things that um, could drive them away and then think me mad, but some of them wouldn't disappear. Scratch went to great lengths to drive the dreads off his property, going as far as cruising around town with a pig's head on the hood of his car, a great insult to a Rastafarian. I see what goes on. People think they use me and we can use them too. That's how the Congos and all those lot come in with pollution. Then the studio get, get mixed up like Babel Tower. come to obey me, to come get rid of me, and to choose Bob Marley to rule. But um, because I was, I'm not a dread. And me not wearing locks, I'm a country boy, and me don't know anything. The rest of us believe in the earth, in the air, wind and water and fire. Not in a lots of money, because the money is only here as a temptation. To be righteous. Don't believe in vanity. This is the chief reason why I'm a Rasta man. Because I want to follow John, commandments and God. That he has been to know that I and I must I, I, I by, by his commandment to avoid violence and crime and land dreams in this country. I follow the law of Jack Rastafari to sit up night and day to chant Isis. Although I am poor in the material realms, but I am still rich 
Most of the dread not spiritual, they are most of the dread are jokes. If you're gonna be dread, you have to be righteous, 100%, holy, 100%, and godly, 100%, before you do that. Can you date Brian? Ja? No. At Freedom. The heart of the Congo's album marks a bleak period in Lee's life. His record label in London refused to release it, deeming it too experimental and overtly spiritual for mainstream taste. His relationship with the Congos and the entire Rasta community came to an end, and his wife left him for a studio musician. Soon after, the Black Art Studio mysteriously burned to the ground. Sir, my name is Speed Poop and Shit. A good time. Come on, get up. We'll do it together. You want to fuck the granny till the devil swell and all that fucking bitch. Get together with it. Where is arm, um, Marsha? Marsha! Hey, shit, think you in here ready? Wait, what's gonna go down? I don't, I want you to get quiet there. I don't want to lose. A good thing. The reason why the studio did have to burn is because the studio has been polluted with um, unholy spirit. And God didn't like that. And the only way to cleanse yourself from unholy spirit is um, to use fire. Power, the, the fire is a higher power that can burn evil and like the fire plant to burn on Babylon. So those, those uh, spirit inside the ark was negative spirit, negative people, and um, in a different body. They look like human beings, but they were not human beings. It was like, like demons, even like the Congo. The Congo was demons, demons in the flesh. So I was mixing good and evil spirit together in the ark, and then I had to burn it down to get rid of what I created. The guy was. I thought I was creating 100% righteousness, but it wasn't. Because some of the artists there wasn't righteous. Yes, sir! Earthquake, lightning, and thunderbolt. Burn. Burn down by the land. We shall set the captive free and break their bands asunder. Oh. We shall cast away their cards. Yes, sir! Yes, sir. Ethiopia is a barber straight for the land to the other jobs. And we the children of Israel out of the hand of Pharaoh. Over. Fuck me. And they were blood clad. Okay. I'm going to tell you that I believe in words. 
And anybody that is close to death, it must be life. After death, come life. So when I burn on the studio, that means to say I, I did burn down myself. You understand it? I burn on my brain and burn again because that's what the word said. That's what I believe in. I believe in the word that Jesus said because the word that Jesus says is that I'm following. <clears throat> you must be born. You must be born again. The name of the series was to be the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant. But like I'm saying, I didn't want to help everybody. <clears throat> and I didn't believe that everybody was God's children. So the devil have children here too. Like the, the, some of the people let into the Ark, I should not do it. Then it means to say I know that I commit a sin and corrupt the Ark. It was the name the Ark of the Covenant. I call it black art because I want to help black people. But I was biased too because I was following some of the Naya Bingi. Some of those Naya Bingi dread them didn't like white people. They were all biased and black hearted and they think white people are the devil. So then I built the ark and I was only defending black people. I wasn't defending white people, I know it wasn't right. I mean it's all end of white people were defending me. So, how low I was sinking. That's why I have to burn it down and burn again. My name is take it from the rich and give it to the poor, oh yeah. No just and instant manifestation, success or done. Lee Perry Pipe got Jack Stone, the man with the mirror sun in his hand. And the scepter of Judah, the lion, lay this lion heart. Straight from the jungle, black and I, but King Lee. Black heart, King Solomon, rock stone. King David fling one stone, the man who paint him life. My am black shadow, the man in the moon. Paint am I, yeah, I'm paint. Painted Africa, painted Ethiopia, painted globe, painted universe, painted equator, from the center of the earth to the pinnacle of the sky, to the edges of the universe. Words, 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 I am words. I am paint, I am art, I am stone and I am perfect, never tell a lie. A lie lip is abomination to the Lord God, Jehovah, Jehovah, Stephari. And they that speak a lie shall perish. Now I am the black pope, the power over the white pope. I am the black king of kings and the lord of lords. You come out of all mine and all action. Action and action, Isaiah 9 is my name. Vision of a country boy near Lee Scratchbury come from a parish near Hanover. Come to the city and quiet dreadlocks and cut down politicians with a thing called repentance is a must. After he burned down his studio, Lee began to paint obsessively on any surface available. All music production stopped. The studio was looted for equipment and master tapes. While Scratch was getting rid of the beggars and thieves from his yard, he also alienated the people who cared and believed in him. His good friends, fellow musicians, international record label executives and family. Give me some water, bring the, bring the words to me. Party words, water. Great. Scratch was succeeding in his goal to drive everyone away from him. But now, people were beginning to wonder if he had completely descended into madness. Speak. Where's the title card? The tiger card. Tiger card, bring that tiger card right. Instant.
And why you kids still lying up in there? Somebody hold up this thing behind there. Because I gonna have a quick turn to turn it around. I'm very stubborn. So if the people say I'm mad, I am mad. Because the way people said I am mad, I don't want them at all. Those are not on my selection. They are the, a different set of people. And if they think I am mad, that's good for me. They won't have to come close to me. And it must just ask me a favor. That's why I make this song, I'm a mad man. That's why I make it. Because people say I'm mad. So I don't think, because people say I'm mad, I should feel bad about it and get, and say, oh, you couldn't say me mad and all The people say what they want to say and they may answer it. And say, yes, I am mad, so what? I am a madman. I am a madman. I am a madman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get rid of problems, get rid of drinks, get rid of bad lucky people. You play mad because you don't want those bad lucky people in your present. People that carry drinks, you don't want them in your present. People that were handsome and too poor and not have an intention to reach any level of lower than poverty level. Then we have to say something to make sure they don't want to come close to me. I'm going to want to give them my blessing. Human Rights Declaration throughout the universe. Hey! As a vice of fire. Well said, well done. Good and faithful servant of the Almighty God, fire. Fire the rest of all words. Ask Brother Moses. And read the books of Moses. Fire is my papa, I kiss him. His name is ancient phantom Elijah. He who controlled 200 million billion volts of electric lights by the power of his nostrils. We call him Papa Fire. He do other things, he flies away with the breath you're blowing him. Breathe a good breath in the fire, and you cherish good and the wire. Breathe a bad breath in the fire, and then it go bad. Because the bad breath burns up all lions. And the good breath cleanses and heals the sick and raises the dead who can glorify God's name. Fire is God Almighty. How about that? recorded a series of bizarre songs under the name of Pipecock Jackson. Down the yellow side of stone, rolling down to Babylon. Down the yellow side of stone, yeah. rolling down to Babylon. Down the yellow side of stone, rolling down to Babylon. about herbs, hey, all the judge you call him us, all the judge, the hippopotamus, all the judge you call him us, hallelujah, all the judge, the hippopotamus, all the judge you call him us, all the judge, the hippopotamus, Daniel's are the stone, talking about the seven seal, and the seven seal of Galilee. From the beyond and the beyond and the seven seal and the angel of the light and the angel of the twilight zone. From the negative zone to the positive bone. All the judge the Lord Moses, how you leash you in the wonderland. Yeah, the way me was so lucky, though. Judge, dry him sword. Way down in the Russian camp. Judge of Lashim's sword 
Way up in the Roman cap, catch a flash him sword. Way in the English camp, Daniel's a death stone. Talking about the seventh vision of Daniel, uh, talking from the throne of Moses. Real sick the most and the high priest. Dreadlocks, dread, dread, dread Jehovah, Jairus, the power, right? dread lions of the desert. Talking about the ark. Talking about the ark of the covenant. Talking about King Solomon. Talking about King David. Talking about the black royal Diana city. Talking about King Elijah. You ride it in the chariot of fire. You are the steering wheel of creation. His imperial, imperial majesty, imperial Celestia. Seven, 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 seven. Six and seven, 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 seven. I'm talking about teacher Moses. He does write all the books of creation. Hey, light it by fire from Emperor Celestia's sword. Hey, uh, XOZ9, Mount Zion, conquering lion, king of Israel. And to us a child is born, and to us a son is given. Two thousand volts of light, three billion lights of Cyclops. Holy I, Mount Zion, Mount Sinai. This is the day when the Almighty God took Mount Sinai. Thunderbolt! Easy, easy lightning! Brimstone and fire! Paper, 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 paper. Carrion! Success are done. Time for you and I, the black man, to have our fun. We're taking over now. Call it, but call it, but I must take in over your honor. Call it, but call it, but I must be taking over on you. Call it, but call it, but I must. Prime Ministers and Governor of France, back over again. Seven seals of lightning, seven seals of thunderbolt, seven years of good and plenty for the black generation, seven years of famine for those who crucify. Say Kali must. The sword must be Kali. The Kali. The ground jar is the sword. And that's the stone that Daniel saw. That is coming from the Bible. Daniel saw the stone rolling into Babylon. If Daniel saw the stone, it was written in the Bible. So I will try to manifest try to manifest most of the thing that is written in the Bible. Because with my confidence in whom I believe in and in what I believe in, I win before I start. Will my king is the music himself. Said so if my king dead, then the music would dead. But the music is immortal. The music gain immortality. How can the music die? What else can make I and I happy on this planet earth but music? A pussy. What else can make us happy about music and pussy? Nothing else. So you can't tell me God dead. If God dead, then there wouldn't be no more love on this planet Earth. As long as love live, then God live. If the creator of the universe dead, everything that the universe the creator created would disappear. And what a liberty for one to think that God can dead. That is too much. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them the trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. The lion the kingdom, the poor and the glory for every night, amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
Like kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them the trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Rise the kingdom, the poor and the glory for every night, amen. Good morning, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them the trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. The lion, the king, and the poor, and the glory for I will not have one man. My duty is to see that Cali herds be free, so that every nation can smoke it freely. Because Cali weed is legal, but all the governments are illegal. Blessed is the man. man that walketh not in the council of the ungodly. I tried with dead on his chest. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Mm. Nor sitteth in the seats of the scornful. My God. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law do he meditate day and the night. Whoa, whoa. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. My God. That bring forth fruit in his season. Wow. His leaves also shall not wither. Wow. And whatsoever he doeth shall cross. Hallelujah! The ungodly are not so. First God shall stamp them down. But are like the chaff with the winds drive it away. Mm -mm. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation. Hey, hallelujah! Yeah. I got my power from earth. I'm addicted to the earth. I'm addicted to rock stone. I'm addicted to water. I'm addicted to peace. I have to peace. And I believe in my peace. And I have to eat. And the food that I eat is coming from the earth. And I believe in shit. Because if uh, the food was not good, I couldn't shit. Because I wouldn't have anything inside to shit. So I believe in my peace, which is the water. I believe in my shit, which is the food, and the plants and the trees from what they were sent to me. And I believe in the invisible ear. Here is. And I believe in the word that Jesus writes, because Jesus' words are my eyesight. After the fall of the Black Art, Lee moved to London alone, abandoning his family, studio, and profession. He drank profusely, sinking into a decade-long depression. In blackest night and brightest day, let no evil escape my sight. Yes. In blackest day and darkest night, let no evil escape my sight. And then we say, in blackest night and brightest day, let no evil escape my sight. supporting people all my life. And all people want from his money. Right? But before there was money, there was life. But if I expect that people can give life and give them something better than money. There's money them fucking want, right? Ask you some questions. No, I just remembered like in your yard you had to support a lot of people. 
Kingston. A lot of people there. I wish I didn't. But I already do it. I can't undo it, but I won't do it again. You used to feel very, you used to have very mixed feelings about, about Bob Marley. How do you feel now? Well, that's what I'm saying. That's where I make my mistakes, and I know I make them. And I won't make any more. Well, that's the way it's wrong. Call me and tell me that Bob Marley died. I say I should be glad didn't get rid of his misery. He didn't have to support so much gunmen, so much dread, so much people. He's lucky. And you know, otherwise, you know how much gunmen he would be have to be feeding now, and how much cocaine man would be he would have to support. He's lucky. We should give thanks to God and save him from, from all those vampires and parasites. alcohol, drinking too much red wine, drinking too much beer. I was killing my fan actually. I was polluting the fans, killing the fans slowly with pollution, which was right, because I'm not, if I'm a healer, I'm not supposed to take um, pollution. In the late 80s, Lee met a Swiss woman at a record shop in London and fell in love. He and his new wife, Morel, moved to a town in the mountains outside Zurich, Switzerland. Because I wished myself away from ragamuffin. I didn't want to have any more of the ragamuffin in my yard. I didn't want to see them smoking in a ragat puffin cigarette. I can burn the fire with herbs, the holy herbs and things, but I won't smoke it anymore because I don't want to have any raga puffin. No raga puffin. I don't want to have any rebel's girl near me, any devil's girl. And I ban the devil boys and ban devil girls and ban everything that is involved with the devil. Right? That's why I'm here. See you in tea time. We're going to have some tea now. Once he settled in Switzerland, Lee attempted to recreate his studio, naming it the Blue Ark. And then I changed the name from, uh, my, from Black Ark to Blue Ark. Uh-huh. It was Black Ark. Yeah, Black Ark Studio. So I, I'm going to build up a new studio that will be bl Blue Ark this time. Uh-huh. Going and a world 
as he stayed sequestered away in Switzerland, it seemed that the world had completely forgotten about Scratch. Rumors had even circulated that he had died. He was in his mid-50s. His days as a top producer were long gone. But little did the world know, Scratch was plotting his comeback as a solo artist. What does your daily routine consist of? Like any like daily things you, you do? What I like to see most is naked girls. Because that's what Ramta loves as, as much. Ramta. They got up slow. Right? They got up love and they got up sex that make children. Ramta. Loves to see naked girls and naked bodies. Uh -huh. In swimming pools and all things like that in the sea. While Ramta seeing the good naked girls in the sea swimming and in the pool swimming. He gets funny up sea and gets real sexy. <laughs> Hey, what are your immediate plans for the future? Um, what, what are the details for the upcoming tour? And what, what's the... My plan for the future is to see a lot of naked girls, have a dark room, load of naked pretty girls. <laughs> and then we make naked pretty sexy music. Uh -huh. In 1998, the popular American rap group, the Beastie Boys, invited Lee to appear on their album, Hello Nasty. The album went on to sell over one million records, exposing Lee to a whole new generation of fans. And the beastly boys with their beastly toys. They give you some beastly joys. This renewed interest in his work once again thrust Perry back into public view. I am the alien from all this space. Shazam! I am here with my brain and my suitcase to collect all the good brain. Only good, perfect, solid, good brain. I live in space and I'm just a visitor here. I am coming through the earth, wind and the fire. And I say to you, have Guinness extra coal and be happy. I'm in Dublin with the Guinness stout people to collect the collective brain from all the space. Woo! Extraterrestrial, extra coal Guinness stout. Good brain. At the turn of the century, with the help of his wife, Morel, Lee quit booze, cigarettes, and became a complete vegetarian. Most notably, he stopped smoking ganja after 45 years of regular use. Well, the first time I heard is when we did come to Kingston when I was 25. And it made me feel like me wasn't on this earth anymore. Take me into a higher heights that me think me gone crazy. At the time, uh, then I discovered that if this is a thing not to be abused. And um, I didn't understand it, then I started to overdo it. That's how we get, like, in Jamaica, they think I was taking coke. I wasn't taking coke, I was smoking too much. Herbs is for a thing like to worship or if you do a little of it, not to overdo it, because if you overdo it, you're overdoing the brain. And when the brain disappears or burnt out, you can't get it replaced. So you go stupid it like a robot. When we discover that the thing that I love, I can get addicted to it, and the thing that you get addicted to is, as I said, thing gonna kill you. Then we stop. I'm better, better than before. People don't know what, what keep me going. They think it's drugs, this, but it's not drugs and anything like that. I'm a painter and I love to paint. And maybe I'm inhaling paint and something is just poison. So instead of it, it poisons me, it turns me into a super being.
you San Francisco To make you San Francisco disco Hello Frisco, this is Liz Grad Fair in San Francisco Cigarette, make music with all the rum and make music with all the wine, then I am born again. Now we are San Francisco, I'm looking at something from San Francisco. This is San Francisco. And that's San Francisco. One minute, let me ask this. Hello. Hello, how are you? Dude, I'm doing good. Do you have any plastic money here? Oh, we don't oh, have yeah, plastic money. Look, plastic. Plastic money. <laughs> are you looking at a minute? How the heck are you doing? Well, I'm making my life over. Who are you? Where are you from, sir? I'm are from you? heaven. Oh. My real name is Pipe Cock Jackson. Pipe. Say that again. Pipe. Pipe. Cock. Pipe Cock. Jack. Son. That's it. Pipe Cock Jackson. Yes. So, where are you from? I'm from heaven. You're full of shit. Yeah? Five Cardiff Crescent, Western Road, Kingston, Jamaica. Not Kingston, Kingston. Oh, Jamaica? Kingston. Okay. And I'm your new president. You. Uh, listen, I'm your new president. It might be funny, <laughs> but I am the new president. I'm Canadian. You ain't my president. Ah, then I will be coming to Canada shortly to, to be your president. There ain't a chance in hell that you would be that way. No, man, I'm not dealing with hell, man. <laughs> you, you won't see any black president in... Um, it has nothing to do with your color. Ah, I see. All right. It has nothing to do with your color. What it has do you do? Nothing to do with the fact you're bullshit. Do you have any black plas any plastic money? You bullshit, man. Eh? You're full of shit. You're not full of shit. I wonder why you are so fat. What have you been eating? I'm so fat because I eat well. You eat well. Are you? And do I you know bullshit. Do you sleep well? Oh, I do. I don't know what you do with the bull. Maybe you fuck the, the mother bull. Pardon? You say I'm bullshit, I'm bullshit, but you might even fuck the mother bull. I said you're bullshitting. Yeah. Well, I'm bullshitting, and you have a big belly, like you're eating doo-doo. <laughs> have a good day with your doo-doo belly, and I will keep my bullshit. Okay. Ta-ta. I swear not to die. I refuse to lie. And I refuse to die. Well, my king is the music himself. Said if my king dead, then the music would dead. But the music is immortal. The music gain immortality. How can the music die? <laughs> 